Okay, right. The Randall cycle was discovered by a bloke called Randall in 1962, I think it was, from memory. Don't quote me on that. I might have the date wrong. Basically, here's what it is. Inside the cells of your body is a thing called the Krebs cycle. Sometimes it's called the TCA cycle. What does it do? It produces reducing equivalents in the form of NADH mostly, which is delivered to the mitochondria where electrons and protons are separated across a membrane and then they are slowly and progressively reacted together with oxygen and that produces energy to produce the cellular energy fuel source which is ATP. Cool. There are two main fuel sources for uh, mitochondrial function. They are fat and carbohydrate. Here's the issue with the Randall cycle. When a cell fluid, the cell cytosol, fills up with nutrient, it gets to a level where it is fully replete with either fat or sugar or a mixture of both. The mitochondria in every cell of your body have a maximum rate of respiration, a maximum rate at which they can use the available energy in the cell fluid to produce ATP per unit time. It's more when you exercise and it's less when you rest. Okay, fine. There is quite a range of operating capacities in mitochondria. They can upregulate quite vastly from where they are at rest, sure. But nonetheless, there is an absolute limit. When the mitochondria reach that limit, which is determined by the, the actual energy requirements of the cell largely at that time, below the maximum exercise efficiency or whatever, maximum exercise output, I should say, then the fat or carbohydrate or a mixture of both will start to pull. That has several effects. Number one, when a cell is full of fat, it will lock the door to both fat and carbohydrate. Why? Because there is heaps of energy stored in that cell ready for use. We don't need it right now. And actually, sugar inside your cells is incredibly toxic. So to protect the inside workings of the important cells like muscle cells, organ cells, etc., the door is locked. No more fat can come in. We don't need any more, thanks. That can stay in the blood. We don't need any more sugar. So we are locking the door. That sugar then sits in the blood and starts to pull in the blood, which is detectable as an increase in your fasting blood glucose level, which they then diagnose as insulin resistance. No, it's nothing of the sort. So, it's a mechanism by which the body protects itself from damage. The sacrificial lamb in this case is the red blood cells which become damaged by the glucose in a high blood sugar situation, and the cells lining the vascular tree, the epithelial cells of the arteries and uh, mainly the arteries and to a smaller extent the veins. Luckily, those cells can be replaced much more often. Uh, and so, so long as you insult your body with the intake of carbohydrates, really, if at all, then that shouldn't be a major problem for your health long term. If, however, you eat carbohydrates every single day of your life, multiple times a day, you're asking for a problem. The Randall cycle will always be activated for a number of hours following every meal, and if that's multiple times a day, then you have multiple sets of multiple hours of Randall cycle activation during the day. And what happens is the excess sugar in the bloodstream, some of that is transmuted directly into fat at the liver, thus to be stored to reduce somewhat the level of sugar in the blood to reduce the toxicity of the sugar in the blood. So a cell that's full of fat will lock out fat and sugar. A cell that is full of sugar will lock out fat, and sugar. Not until the energy level in the cell drops below the level of what is required at that time and more energy from outside the cell is needed is the door unlocked. Only then can any sugar in the blood start entering the cell and start being used for energy or fat or whatever else. Fat and carbohydrate cross-inhibit one another, basically, is the take-home message of the Randall cycle. There you go.